Good morning guys, how's everyone doing? Another glorious, glorious morning. Welcome to my channel, Ballstool Boys Towers. I'm actually outside the um the clinic clinic waiting for my missus to come out because she's gonna get her little um her Tootsie sorted out her toes. So I'm in the shade outside and um yeah, obviously on my phone. I've just checked YouTube and I see uh G N E A K A Jimmy um has made a good video about me and actually shared it and um I really appreciate that. Thanks very much, Jimmy, mate. You're good stuff, you brother. And uh, I just wish there was more of us people about um, to dish out the convict justice to these beast and society, beast and monsters of this world. Um, I see Alan Alan's video recently uh, when he went into the um, Costa Coffees and stuck it on on the one of his um, old employees. That was quite impressive, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, I mean, different horses for different courses. Um, again, Alan must have more control than me because if that was me, I would have literally waited outside for him, wait for it to get nice and dark and got ordered up and done the job on him. And uh, I'm not like that now. I don't go out hunting these people. Um, and this is just what I, what I was like back in the day. So I'm, I'm a completely reformed person now. I'm a law-abiding citizen. Um, but let's hope, let's hope um, I'll never ever get tested again because that was what that was in Wayland in 2010 with Venables. It was one big test and to be honest, um, I, failed, I failed the test. So in a way I was a bit of a failure for, um, for doing, doing the uh, business on him um, and you know risking my freedom, risk, risking my liberty and risking a life sentence. Um, when the CID pulled me into the visit and all and started questioning me, she started going over a, a few of the injuries what uh, Venables had suffered and um, why he wanted to get the police involved because he um, he suffered so many bad injuries. Um, he ended up with a fractured skull, um, a broken cheekbone, a broken eye socket, and he was left on the left in in a pool of blood on the floor for around ten minutes, um, literally swimming in his own blood until the ambulance come. Um, but at one stage, yeah, um, it wasn't looking too good. Um, but yes, yeah, so allegedly it was me what done this. Um, I don't know whether really uh, many other people would have done what I'd done um, with just two days left on their sentence. But, you know, back in, back in 2010, that was the mindset what I was actually in. Um, and it just goes to show you, it's, it's a different, dangerous, dangerous mindset. And it's a mindset what needed to be changed. I needed to put it to bed. I needed uh, rest. I needed, um, I needed my head to be clear from all things like that because one more, one more charge would have most certainly got me a life sentence. Um, so yeah, I uh, just thought I'd let you know what injuries uh, John Venable suffered. And uh, these days, he's actually bossarded. So his right, his right eye is going inwards. Um, and apparently that's down to um, him having a fractured skull and having his head jumped on for a few times. I'm not asking anyone for any gratitude. I'm not asking anyone for any medals or anything like that. I don't uh, expect absolutely nothing. I don't even expect anyone to say thanks because it was a natural thing to do. And I'm sure the most inmates um, what were serving a long time, what got presented with that opportunity would have done the same thing as me. Um, it all boils down to, to this, will I do it today? Uh, I probably would, yeah. Yeah, I probably would. Um, I don't think that part of me will ever, ever leave me. That'll be in my brain forever and ever and ever. Um, I've got a lot of morals, I'm old school. I've got a lot of solidarity, I've got a lot of respect for people, and I've got old-fashioned values. And that's very hard to find these days. Um, not not slagging the um, youngsters off, because, you know, we've got to um, let them by to give them their turn. So it's their type of turn type of thing. Um, and it's like my turn to sit back and watch the world go round type of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, back in the day when I was young, you didn't have, um, you know, 12 and 13 year old kids um, riding about selling drugs uh, on push bikes, on mountain bikes and things like that. It was, 
it was all three series BMWs and things like that. The old um, 2002 BMWs, the old Rover SDIs, do you remember them? We had Triumph Stags and things like that. But nowadays, you know, you can you can imagine, you can you can just tell um, how much reality and life has really changed because now you've got these drug dealers who are giving um, young kids on push bikes drugs to carry and weapons to carry. Um, and that's because if they think that the young kids don't have the dairy on them so much as them. And also they're giving the young kids their dirty work to do. Um, and they're making the young kids feel great, like like they're Pablo Escobar or something like that. And it all comes to a crashing end and it all ends in tears. Because what normally happens is the drug dealer um, starts getting the dealer into debt. Um, and the dealer starts sniffing his own profit or smoking his own profit. The runner, I mean, the runner would start sniffing his own profit and start um, smoking his own profit, and that leaves him in debt to the uh, to the dealer or the idiot above him who's giving him the gear. Um, and that's what a lot of them want because then, at that stage, then they've got 